Good evening and welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Val Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmondson, and Ulysses Ruley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco, the providers of PGTigersOnline.com. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Ozark Delight, America's number one fundraising lollipops. Lewis Automotive, serving all of Northwest Arkansas since 1947. The Bank of Fayetteville, we're banking on your potential. Sterling Drug, serving Prairie Grove since 1918. Flowers and Friends, flowers, gifts, and more with a hometown touch. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burger, shakes, malts, and a whole lot more just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. J&B Auto, Prairie Grove's bumper-to-bumper parts store. And by Frederick's One Stop, the one stop for all your needs when you're on the go. Tonight's broadcast is made possible through the generous donations of PG Telco, providers of PGTigersOnline.com, and by the Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club, where showing your Tiger pride is just one membership away. And now, sit back and relax. It's time for Prairie Grove Tiger Basketball. Welcome to tonight's game between the Prairie Grove Tigers and the Gentry Pioneers. Tonight's Colors Day here in Gentry, Derrick, and so the boys are going to play first. I think this is the third time this year that, that this has happened to us. And it might be the third week in a row. Uh, P. Ridge last week, I know it was their Colors Day, and then the week before that it was Prairie Grove's Color Day at home against Gravit, and then tonight Colors Day here at Gentry, so we should be used to it if nothing else. Boys playing first. Well, this is an important game for us tonight because tonight, uh, with the loss to Ozark, uh, Ozark and us are now tied in the conference, but they have the tiebreaker on Prairie Grove because they've beaten Prairie Grove twice. However, the, re- the, the opponents down the stretch are much different. Prairie Grove has Gentry tonight, and uh, nothing is ever guaranteed. Gentry's colors tonight, but Gentry's uh, yet to win a game this year. Right. And then... Uh, then we have Berryville on Tuesday night on the road. Definitely be a tough contest there. Yep. And then lastly, we'll finish at home against Farmington. And that's always a battle no matter what. Yep. What's uh, Ozark got down the stretch, Derek? Ozark's going to have to play uh, Berryville down the stretch. Uh, they've got Shiloh Christian again down the stretch. And then I think they've got Pea Ridge is their third game. So they've definitely got a, a tougher stretch. If we can win this game, possibly sneak another one next week, we're going to be in good shape to at least get the five seed could slide into the fourth seed depending on who's there and tiebreaker situation. It helps that we've beaten Berryville already this year. Uh, We split with Gravit, but they've got us on points. Absolutely. Uh, And so that one, uh, we wouldn't want to see them fall down to that that spot, but anybody else, it's kind of anybody else's game. Well, yeah, and if we were to find a way to to beat Berryville, uh, then we'd have a shot at that fourth seed. But Regardless, you got to win, no matter uh, where you ended up being seated. But, uh, Derek, let's talk a little bit about the loss to Prairie Grove this week. Uh, Ty Tice, who was one of our co stake and shape players of the game on Tuesday night against and the loss against Ozark, uh, the very next morning uh, let our audience know what happened. Yeah, Ty uh, went to the emergency room, I guess, uh, maybe that next morning. It could have been the afternoon. I think it was that next morning uh, with emergency appendectomy. So... Um, he's going to be out uh, two weeks from what I hear um, and, and possibly the whole year. You know, I had that same surgery a couple years ago, and I was not in the shape that Ty's in, but they told me nothing for six weeks. So Ty is probably a faster healer than I am. But, you know, the lost toes arc was bad Tuesday night. The loss that Ty brought, you know, may be even worse than the, than the loss on the floor. Um, having said that, it's going to give some other guys an opportunity to come back and, and fill that void or try to fill that void because Ty was playing really solid the last uh, few weeks. I mean, it started with that Farmington game. He led us with 17 points on that road victory. And, uh, you know, again, Tuesday night you mentioned it, 16 points I yes, think against yes, Ozark. Yep. Kind of carried us at times and kept us into that ball game. But tonight we're going to have a chance to possibly see Chad Battles get some more minutes 
Chad played well Tuesday night before he kind of got Yeah, hurt. he got a, got a little knee bruised. I think he's exactly. recovered. I think it was about a day or two for him to recover. But, right. Derek, you know, Ty, uh, what, what I've really enjoyed, he may be watching tonight because he's probably at home sitting in a bed. Hopefully he's got a laptop there and is able to watch. And, and Ty, on pain medication, yeah, hopefully. And hopefully you're on a speedy recovery, Ty. Yeah. But uh, we wish you the best. But what's impressed me so much is, you know, anytime a sophomore starts, those first couple of games, I don't care how good you were in junior high, yeah. that speed of the game is just so different. And I think he, I noticed that with him the first couple. And then whenever you saw him at the Christmas break, and they went down and played some tournaments, played with Mina, yeah. played against, and then he came back after Christmas break, and he was a, he was a, a much improved player. Not that he, I mean, but he was, he was exactly. playing extremely hard and making a big difference on the court. Well, let's go to the court now, and uh, we're getting ready for the starting lineups for tonight's game. Okay, we're going to have the national anthem. So. I don't know if that was live or Memorex. I couldn't tell. <laughs> In the background, you're here, here the uh, Gentry alma mater. Derek, it'll be interesting tonight to see how Coach uh, Edmondston, how he how he uh, utilizes his bench. He's going to have to go there a little more. Maybe see some more playing time out of Matt Glenn, uh, Derek Arguello, Arguello. Yep. Jacob Storley. Yep. Uh, he's going to have to utilize a lot more of the bench than maybe he has. I had a little conversation with him about that uh, last night, and he said he's going to have to go a little deeper than he's been going. Yeah, and, you know, Bradley Harton has come in and played well the past oh. few weeks. Uh, Peyton Sims is a guy that we saw at the start of the year get a lot of playing time, and it's kind of uh, tapered off here as the season's gone along, but he could be called upon. And it looks like Chad Battles, Lynn, is going to get the start and tie his place tonight. Marcus Patterson, a senior, he'll be starting tonight. Cameron Dowdy, a junior, he'll be starting. Need some points out of Cameron tonight. Yeah, Marcus and, and Cameron both need to be able to score Del for us tonight. Delton Rhodes, he's starting. And there's Jordan Baumgartner. The Mohawk is gone. The Mohawk is gone, and Chad Battles hits the start. Good to see his knee uh, quickly recovered. He, it looked, I wasn't sure the other night, because he, usually when someone's hurt, they do that, try to stand and initially fall, and that's what happened to him. And uh, right after that, you know, for another day, he was he was uh, recovering. The Gentry Pioneers starting lineup. 
Chris Ryan, 5'9", Jr. Dusty Haig, 5'10", Sophomore. Dylan Cox, Senior. Also number 12, Dylan Adler. And number 23, Rich Zong. Well, you know, Gentry, you know, they, they may, they may uh, not have a win yet this year, but they want to win Colors Day. And, oh, and you don't want to be the team that, that is the first to lose. So yeah. Prairie Grove really needs to get after it tonight. Uh, we were talking about on the way over here, and I, I told my wife, I don't want anybody to go winless in a season. It's just miserable. I don't want their win to come from <laughs> at our expense tonight. But, you know, you, you want to see these guys. They've they practice just as much as we have all year, and you hate to see anybody go winless, but we're hoping the Tigers get a win tonight, that's for sure. A much-needed win to help in the seedings for the district tournament, and the Pioneers get the jump. Chris Wyan, he's covered by Delton Rhodes, and Delton's going to get a quick foul eight seconds into the game. Yeah, not, not what we wanted to see happen, and, and Delton's done this uh, a couple games now where we've seen, and he's He's played pretty well, uh, staying out of foul trouble, and that's the last thing we want to see is number 22 getting some, some early fouls in the ball game. And I didn't even see it, Lynn. Was it a was It, it was, was a foul. It, it was okay. a Yeah, he, he was playing a little aggressive. Nice, nice uh, reach, uh, knock away there by Battles. There's Zong. He gets it to Cox. Cox in the corner over to Adler. Adler inside. And, the Pioneers strike first. Yeah, nobody for the Tigers was back home on that backside block. I think both of our postmen went to the high post, and nobody covered up that backside block. Good possession by the Pioneers. Now Delton Rose draws. He's going to be fouled. I believe that was Zong on the foul. Yeah, it was. That's his first, team first. This is the first team I think we've played all year, Derek, where we may actually have – we match up at least height-wise with them. We, we're, we're not bigger than they are, but they're not bigger than us. Right. So you're right. Yeah, this is a welcome change from what we've seen in our conference this year. We're, it seems like we're always a smaller team out on the floor. But we've played well. And, we, and you know, a guy like Baumgartner, who's not even six feet tall probably, he, he plays big inside. Yeah, he's held his own down there, done a good job for us this year, especially from somebody that, you know, he didn't even play ball last year. So he's done a good job for us. Cox out at the top, gets it over to Adler. Feeds inside to Zong, nice play. Nice ball movement by the Pioneers. Dusty Haig. And the Pioneers lead four to two, battles. Cross court over to Patterson, inside. Baumgartner walked, yep. <laughs> Good call there by the ref. And he's got the, what? <laughs> Did you see that, who, me? me? <laughs> four to two. Pioneers lead. Well, and right off the bat, Prairie Grove switched their defense. They were basically playing four on four because Delton Rhodes was locked up with y and Prairie Grove back into their two-three zone defense now. And the nice rebounds there by the Pioneers. They came to play tonight. Prairie Grove is going to have to be aggressive. They're going to have to, uh, they can't play soft. Adler with the ball. There's Wyan feeds inside. That's Haig, and it's a battle in there, and Delton Rhodes comes up with it. Delton's going to go all the way, passes it to Dowdy. Dowdy, no good. Rhodes with the rebound, taken away by Adler. And now, nice shot there, and a nice rebound by Zong. The Gentry getting a lot of loose balls, a lot of offensive rebounds in the early going. We're going to have to do a better job of of blocking out and getting a, a body on a man down there. Ryan gets it to Cox. Zong's working the baseline real hard down there and 
Yeah, that, that short corner area, that high post area, those are the two places that you can exploit a 2-3 zone, and that's exactly what Gentry is being patient right now, trying to get that ball into those two areas. Cox for three, way off the mark. But Prairie Grove's not being very aggressive on the rebounds there, and we were actually lucky to get that. I thought that went off a road. Yeah, first three minutes, Gentry has definitely played a little with uh, more energy than we have. We've got to get that picked up because if you – if you let teams like this hang around and build that confidence. momentum, they've got the confidence, and it becomes that much harder to win games like this. Patterson, he drives all the way. Delton comes down strong, but loses it, and now Cox gets the re – oh, he's pulled his foot. Good call. Four forty-three to go in the first quarter. Prairie Grove trails Gentry 4-2. to two. If you're just joining us, the boys are playing first tonight. The girls play next. This is Cur Colors Day at Gentry and a full house tonight here where the Pioneers play Delton Rose trying to make something happen we're going to get a break here with a foul <laughs> well we we need some good breaks the past two games that we've had we had some tough calls go against against Ozark and some tough calls against P Ridge last Friday night so Battles inside, Patterson knocked away, Baumgartner with the rebound out to Dowdy. And Prairie Grove gets the ball back. Dowdy for three, no good. Knocked away by Battles, a good play by Battles to keep it alive. Delton Rhodes for three, no good. And this time the ball is gonna go to Gentry. Nice hustle inside by Baumgarten and Battles, keeping the ball alive. Yeah, that's a good possession. Even though we didn't get any points, we made Gentry work hard on that defensive possession. Got two or three good looks at the basket. They didn't fall in for us, but good good offensive possession. And we'll start well, converting those hopefully sooner or later. Well, we're halfway through the first quarter. Uh, Prairie Grove only with two points. Gentry leading 4-2. Nice thought there by Wyan. He, he, he could have pulled up and hit the jumper. He looked for Haig. Nice, uh, nice, nice defensive play there by the Tigers. Yeah, good, good defensive adjustment right there by Marcus Patterson and getting down to cover that backside block. Cox there. He's got Zong. Adler for three. Bottom. Seven to two. Gentry with the lead. We're three thirty to go here in the first quarter, and and that's got to have the Gentry. Fans happy. They haven't probably seen a lot of leads this year. Battles pulls it back out. There's Dowdy. He recovers. Battles inside. And the opportunity for the and one. <clears throat> nice aggressive play there by Chad. That's the kind of that's the kind of play we're gonna need out of Chad with Ty Tice out. Yeah, exactly. I was just fixing a comment that we just look kind of out of sync here in the early going. Of course, this five hasn't started a game since before Christmas, so um, good take by, by Chad just going really aggressive. And Chad completes the three-point play. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Chad is 15 for 15 from a line this year. That's right. Don't jinx him again before the next time. No. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say that before. And, Lynn, that's two fouls on uh, number 23 for Gentry Zong. And I assume that's the way you say that. There yeah, I think so. And a nice three-point play by Chris Wyan. And a timeout. Gentry calls a timeout, and they lead 10 to 5. Well, Gentry has not been afraid to shoot the outside shot from the perimeter. They missed their first couple, and here in the past minute or so, they've gotten hot from behind the arc. We got to slow that down a little bit. You saw Ozark hit a couple from us to get momentum in that game Tuesday night from behind the arc and really change that ball game. We had not a big lead going into the halftime, but we had controlled most of the first half and, and part of the third quarter before Ozark started to get hot on us. Well, I'm going to check the comments page, Derek. See who might be out there if you're watching tonight. Go to pgtigersonline.com. Mary Ann back home in West Helena. Uh, she really, she's a faithful listener along with Henry. I definitely have to give a shout out to our camera lady tonight. We've had a lot of great camera people throughout the year, but not any prettier than this one. <laughs> 
Chad battles, and it's good. And Chad being aggressive. Yeah, that's but a good start for Chad coming in off the off the bench. I, he hasn't started since before Christmas. He's I better got five be, points. I there. better be clear on that last statement because we we have young. That is my wife that is doing it. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure people knew it wasn't me on the camera too. <laughs> 12-7, Gentry leads. Battles, he's not, he's a get, bottom, and he's hot tonight. Chad Battles, he's come to play. Chad has got eight points already in the first half. Yeah, if we can get the other guys going, Chad's doing his part right now. We gotta, we've gotta do a better job on defense, so rebounding it, the ball. You know, Gentry's playing well. There's a shot there by Adler, in and out, rebound by Patterson. There we go, Marcus. And now Delton. Drives hard, throws to the basket, and it's good. Delton Rhodes, he ties the game with 1.29 to go here in the first quarter, 12 to 12. Be careful, no foul. Ah, that was a weird possession, Derek. I'm not quite sure how he got away with additional dribbles, but... I guess they said we knocked it away. 14-12, one minute to go, Delton. And the foul's gonna go on number 25, I believe that is Colby Bryant. Not Colby Bryant, Colby, Colby. Bryant. I think we'd we'd have a lot less chance of winning this game if it was Colby <laughs> Bryant out there. I think that could be five on one. Yeah. We might even could throw a six man out there yeah. for that one. Chad Battles bringing the ball in. He gets it into Delton at the top of the circle down to a minute to go here in the first quarter and Gentry's definitely come to play tonight cross court pass oh and Bryant went for the steal and this is by Rhodes and he went for the steal kind of left dealt with an opportunity to score and not able to convert 40 seconds to go 14 12 Gentry leads and Wyan bottoms a three 17 to 12 and Boy, they are hot tonight, and uh, hot. they have come to play. Their largest lead has been five. They're at five now. Battles, drives, pulls up, jumper, no good. Rebound, Patterson, and they're going to call it on the floor. He actually should have called a two-shot foul whenever Chad was driving. We didn't get the call. So we missed the opportunity for an and one, and the missed opportunity for two-shot fouls. We need to convert here. Battles off his knee, out to Dowdy. Dowdy pulls up. I think that's going to be a two. No good. Oh, oh my goodness. That could almost be uh, intentional, Derek. He shoved him. That was just a flat-out shove right in the back from the forearm of number five, Dylan Cox. The only positive about that is that's his second foul there. Well, Gentry's in a little bit of foul trouble in the early going. Well, they've got six already. Yep. So Prairie Grove goes to the one-on-one -on -one for the entire second quarter. We got nine yeah. seconds to go here in the first 17-12 Tigers trail. Battles with the ball. We got seven seconds. Dowdy, and he's he's going to get. They're going to call a two-shot foul there. <laughs> he was passing. We'll take it. <laughs> well, as we said, we need some breaks to go our way after the the past couple games. We haven't seen. A lot of calls go our way. It doesn't seem like. He was bad. <laughs> Coach saw it. Yeah. And uh, hopefully the bad call will get us at least one point here because we would be uh, possibly losing the possession there. Well, we need to see Dowdy get some points, Lynn. He went uh, scoreless Tuesday night. He's been in a little bit of a drought, and he's a good offensive player. So that one drops for go. him. He gets a free throw. 17-13. And that's the end of the first quarter. And the Gentry Pioneers have to be pleased with how well they played here in the first quarter. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. The score, Gentry Pioneer 17, Prairie Grove Tigers 13. We will be back after these messages. Let's face it, life's moving along at a faster pace these days, and every now and again you find that one stop that allows you to catch your breath. That one stop that reminds you of the good old-fashioned values. The one stop that hand dips their ice creams and makes hamburgers to die for. The one stop that can furnish you with propane and pizza and everything in between. And they usually call you by your name and ask you about your family. Well, that place in Prairie Grove is Frederick's One Stop. Serving Prairie Grove since 1975. They say, Go Tigers!
Well, I was checking the comment page during the, the break, and Dina, glad that uh, you're watching tonight. Hope you're recovering quickly. And uh, Ty, we see that uh, we wish you could be here too, Ty. We, uh, we miss you being here. We wish you a very, very speedy recovery. And uh, know that the Tigers are know that the Tigers are here uh, representing you tonight. And Chad's definitely trying to fill in for uh, the, the points that you've been contributing. Well, the Tigers have the possession arrow, so they'll get the ball. Hey, Derek, I'm looking down here, and Derek Arguello's dad's got a stat sheet deal. We might be, uh-oh, and they're going to call Cameron for a walk. I got to tell you, in spite of Gentry being 0-23, their, their fans are here, and that's it's good to see. And... You know, and they're winning tonight. Yeah, they're they're ahead. It's color day. Everything is going well for them right now, and except for that pass, we'll take that. But I think yeah, you know, we talked about it. The longer Gentry's able to stay competitive in this ball game, the harder it's going to be for Prairie Grove to kind of overturn the momentum and, and come away with the win tonight. Hart and Brad Harton's in the game right now for Jordan Baumgartner. He's going baseline there. Nice, strong move. They're going to call him for a walk, though. That was at the third or fourth walk right right here early in the ballgame for, for the Tigers. They've called us a couple times on shuffling our feet. And I think all of them have been, have been pretty good calls. I oh, think yeah. we actually walked on, on all of them. Oh, I, no, there's no doubt about it. And a nice three-point shot there made by Dylan Adler. And that's two three-pointers for two Adler. Two three-pointers for Adler, and they lead 2013, the largest lead of the game for Gentry. Prairie Grove has not had the lead tonight. And nice, strong move there by Patterson. 2015, Tigers trail. Well, Lynn, when, when Gentry gets that ball to the high post area, we need to stop collapsing on that player because if he's going to shoot that 18-footer, fine, but we can't collapse and have him kick out just like but, they yep. did there. Almost got another open. Well, there it is. And they that one almost went in straight for, up for that guy. Ryan. He had a good look at the basket. There's Battles. He's going to throw up a three. Bottom! Chad Battles has gone into double figures, 11 points, 20-18, to 18, and... We've talked about Chad a lot. It's a confidence thing with Chad, and he's got it tonight. He's pulling up and taking that shot. Well, and it could very well be. He's back in the starting lineup. He's got a little more confidence, and and Chad the senior, too. I mean, he, this is his last go around, so yep. it's his time to shine right now. He's doing a great job. Oh, my goodness. He was going to get away with that, Lynn. <laughs> he was going to get away with that until he just threw the ball on the ground. <laughs> The referee felt obligated to call something. Well, yeah, if the player gives it up, you almost have to oh, call. Oh, yeah, yeah. Delton, there's Brad Harton, and Battles is wanting the ball now. He's got that confidence up. Brad Harton. Ba We're down. There's Battles again. No good, but not a terrible shot. Well, you hope the better that, that you know, people like uh, Chad are playing and the people around us, the, the more that's going to open up free looks for Delton Rhodes because right now Delton's having to work for everything he gets. How many points does Delton have? We know Chad Delton's has. Delton's got four. Oh, he got away with that? Holy smoke. Uh, well, Delton with four. So, Patterson with two. And now, nice feed. There's battles for three. That's off. But a nice rebound there. And a strong move there by Harden. And they're, and they're going to call that on Zong, and that's his third foul. Well, Rich Zong is... He's an important part of their offense because he's kind of been getting it there and, and working, but the guys have been making it have been Adler and Ryan, and now Brad Harton hits the first free throw. And with this shot, Prairie Grove can tie the ball game for the first time since it was 2-2, two to two, and Prairie Grove's yet to hold the lead. 4.56 to go, second quarter no good, and Prairie Grove still trails. And he, he leaves his on, he's left his on in. I sure did. Colby Bryant with the ball at the top of the key.
Oh, and there's a nice drive. False. Well, that was good initial defense. And Coach Price taking another timeout there. That's already two timeouts he's yeah. taken. <clears throat> well, it was good initial defense by Patterson out on the perimeter. He was pressuring the ball, but then when Zong put the ball on the floor, he was able to explode and get by Marcus. And when you allow that to happen, bad things can happen to your defense when you let the guy with the, the basketball get into the lane like that. Well, if you're watching tonight, go to pgtigersonline.com. And what happens, sometimes you'll go and you'll watch the live feed. You have to open up another uh, another window with Explore to go to the comments page. We always like to know where everyone's watching from. Again, uh, Ty, we know you're watching. And yeah, I need to tell Ty's mother that her other son, Cole, uh, fifth grader, maybe he's sixth grader, fifth grader, I think. He has made it to the gym. I saw him here tonight. <laughs> I know she was worried about him getting to the, the game tonight. I did see him alive and well. So, Nice move. Oh, count that. No, they're going to call it on the floor. And into the game, it checked in as Peyton Sims. But now Dowdy's got to go make the one. one. That's twice now that Dowdy's drove and uh, been denied the and one. Yeah, and that's the second foul on Wyand. So the, the fouls for the Pioneers are starting to mount up. And got, I believe that's nine fouls. So yeah, yeah, they've got one and one here, and Dowdy makes the first. Pulls the Tigers within two, 22-20. Second shot on the way, and the Tigers now only down by one, 22-21, down four, down to 4.25 to go. Oh! Block. Adler, that's Cox. Cox, is he's got a couple threes himself, doesn't he? At least one, I believe. Cox just has a two-point back. Oh, does he? Okay. Two points, yep. Well, and then the thing that's helping Prairie Grove along with the out offensive output by battles is we're seven out of nine at the free throw line, and Gentry has yet to shoot a free throw. So that's going in our favor. Oh, right and that's now. a foul on number five, and that is Cox, and that's his third foul. So Cox with three, and Zong with three, Wyan with two, and the one guy that's been kind of hot for him, the senior Dil Dylan Adler, he doesn't have any fouls. And And now Prairie Grove's in the double bonus, and we're halfway through the second quarter. So Prairie Grove will shoot two free throws anytime they're fouled down the stretch. Tie ball game, 22-22, and with this shot, Prairie Grove could take the lead for the first time this evening. And, Lynn, this is where Prairie Grove needs to continue to be aggressive on the offensive end, not settle for jump shots. Gentry's not going to be able to foul us. Got to keep going to the basket on him. Baumgartner hustling, and he almost recovered it, but... Ball was able to be picked up by Bryant. Nice hustle by Jordan there. Yeah, good effort right there off the miss. Now Peyton Sims, you may have said that, Lynn, when right. I wasn't paying attention. I was writing something down, but Sims is into the ball game. Number one, Marcus Page is in for Gentry. We're all tied up at 22, 3.44 to go here until the end of the first half. Oh, good effort there by Sims. And Sims was able to hit it, and then Page went for it and it went off his fingers. Page is a sophomore. Yeah, but I kept hearing Coach Ed yell for a trap, and that time Sims anticipated the ball nicely, got out there, and got the, got the turnover for us. Now Dowdy for three. No good. Peyton Sims is going to be put. Oh, I, oh. Wow. oh, All right, I know anyone's watching. They can't. He was pushed out of bounds. A travel was called, and then he knocked the ball out of bounds. We. We should have got the ball twice oh, then. That was, an, that, was a, that was a pretty bad call right there. Oh, you know, we, are, we don't talk about officials ever. No, no, no. But seriously, that that one was a bad call. We've only got one foul so yeah, far. Yeah, and it was dealt in eight much. seconds. It came with eight <laughs> seconds to go right. or, or eight seconds into the ball game. And now nice hustle there by Peyton Sims. Sims is playing hard tonight. And Battles is open underneath, but Dowdy goes, drives. On Delton Rhodes able to recover Dowdy with the ball. Keep attacking. <clears throat> and Dowdy's going to be called for a walk. There's been a, I, I bet, I, I'm going to check with uh, Arguello over here and find out how many travels have been called on us tonight if he's got that down. Well, you're right, Lynn. We've got two guys we got to be aware of on the on the outside, number three and number 12. 
Right now those guys, uh, early on in the game, they were getting loose a little bit. Now we're doing a little bit of a better job of, of staying out on those guys. Derek Arguello checks in for the Tigers. And Cameron's going to take a little break. I think he got a little frustrated there with what? the no calls and then the travel call. And we've seen Cameron do that a little bit, get, get his, let his emotions get the best of him, get into a little bit of trouble on offense, and he's going to settle down over there on the bench for a couple minutes, and he'll be coming back in to give us some good minutes. 22 all, 210 to go. Peyton Sims has come in and played hard, Derek. And yes, he has. Battles knocks it away, and the ball's going to be retained. Tell you what, the energy level is up for the Tigers. Getting a lot of hands on passers right now, doing a good job with our effort on the defensive end. You know, we haven't played poorly tonight. We've had some calls go against us, but Gentry's played well. They've shot well. And uh, there is... Wyan for three, no good. And uh, another rebound there by Gentry. Down to 145, 22 all. Chris Ryan, he's standing way out here and not attacking at all. Down to 134. Well, does Gentry play for one shot here, Lynn? Uh, I think they're going to make Prairie Grove come out on him at least. Maybe they are playing for one shot. That, this is, the, I think, the sophomore down here, Page, is who you got to let him get the ball to and then force him to do something. And they're going to call Arguello for, a, or maybe it was Sims. They're going to call Peyton Sims for the foul. It's only Prairie Grove's second foul. And Battle's going to take a break. Coming in is Matt Glenn. Chad played an excellent first half. Yes, he has. Bryant with the ball. If we've not played well in any area, it's been the off, I mean the defensive boards. We've not right. done well there tonight. Bryant drives. 21 in the get back in the game. That's Haig. He's been out for a little bit, I believe. Or I haven't called his name much lately. Oh, just missed there was Glenn. Haig under down low, and Delton's going to get his second foul, and they're going to be two shots. Called on Baumgartner. Called on Baumgartner, which is good. I mean, that means Baumgartner with one, Sims with one, and Delton Rhodes with one. 46 seconds to go in the first half. 22 all. Haig at the line. Shot on the way, and good. Gentry gets the lead back. Patterson and Dowdy back into the game. Again, if you're just joining us, the girls will be playing after this tonight. And he makes both. 24-22, Gentry leads. 43, 42, 40 seconds to go here in the first half. And the ball lost, and now my guess is Gentry will play for the last shot. Yeah, I think that was a, a critical possession because you know if Gentry's able to hang on to this lead, we don't have anybody guarding that guy down low. Uh, they're going to go into that locker room sky high. And he's used three timeouts in the first half. Well, if we could force some kind of action to force him to take a fourth one, then that leaves him with yeah. a... Well, and, and the reason, one of the reasons I'm sure was to set up a play specifically for this situation, but another thing is he... He immediately checked in Dylan Cox and Rich Zong, who are both have three fouls. So he's getting them back into the ball game to set up an offensive play here to try to extend the lead before halftime. A young lady from Gentry just did about a uh, five back handspring there. What we'll do tonight for halftime is, as soon as the Prairie Grove cheerleaders come on, we'll watch them through the halftime if they come on and do a, a routine. And then after that, we'll take a break, and you'll probably see some commercials. But if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're watching and you want to see the cheerleaders, we'll, we'll hang here until they, they come out. Seventeen seconds to go here in the first half. Prairie Grove trailing 24-22, and Gentry looking for their first win of the season. And hoping he walked. 
Yeah, as many walks as they've called tonight, then they missed that one. I, I, I'm going to have to check at halftime the walks that have been called on us tonight. 13 seconds to go. And they do have the double dribble call. We're down to 10 seconds, so that was a wasted timeout. Wasted timeout, and especially for your third timeout, you've only got two left. He immediately gets Cox and Zong back out of the game. But I really think this is important right here for the Tigers to get points on this possession and not allow all the momentum to go to Gentry into the locker room. He doubt he did walk. And Gentry, Gentry will go into halftime with the lead, 24-22. Stay with us here. We're going to try to, I think the cheerleaders are going to, we'll see if they're going to perform here. Tribute. And I believe uh, Prairie Grove Trillier is going to watch. And we're going to go ahead and go to a timeout here, uh, to commercial break. We'll be back after this. And actually, we're going to be, we'll take a break. It'll be about a five or six minute break, and then we'll come back to you. Good evening and welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Vol Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmondson, and Ulysses Ruley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco, the providers of PGTigersOnline.com. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Ozark Delight, America's number one fundraising lollipops. Lewis Automotive, serving all of Northwest Arkansas since 1947. The Bank of Fayetteville, we're banking on your potential. Sterling Drug, serving Prairie Grove since 1918. Flowers and Friends, flowers, gifts, and more with a hometown touch. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burger, shakes, malts, and a whole lot more just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. J&B Auto, Prairie Grove's bumper-to-bumper parts store, and by Frederick's One Stop, the one stop for all your needs when you're on the go. Tonight's broadcast is made possible through the generous donations of PG Telco, providers of PGTigersOnline.com, and by the Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club, where showing your Tiger pride is just one membership away. And now, sit back and relax. It's time for Prairie Grove Tiger Basketball. Welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Vol Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmondson, and Ulysses Ruley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco, the providers of PGTigersOnline.com. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Ozark Delight, America's number one fundraising lollipops. Lewis Automotive, serving all of Northwest Arkansas since 1947. The Bank of Fayetteville, we're banking on your potential. Sterling Drug, serving Prairie Grove since 1918. Flowers and friends, flowers, gifts, and more with a hometown touch. 
Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers, shakes, malts, and a whole lot more just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. J&B Auto, Prairie Grows, Bumper to Bumper Parts Store, and by Frederick's One Stop, the one stop for all your needs when you're on the go. Tonight's broadcast is made possible through the generous donations of PG Telco, providers of PGTigersOnline.com, and by the Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club, where showing your Tiger pride is just one membership away. And now, sit back and relax. It's time for Prairie Grove Tiger Basketball. And welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Val Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmiston, and Ulysses Ruley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco, the providers of PGTigersOnline.com. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Ozark Delight, America's number one fundraising lollipops. Lewis Automotive, serving all of Northwest Arkansas since 1947. The Bank of Fayetteville, we're banking on your potential. Sterling Drug, serving Prairie Grove since 1918. Flowers and friends, flowers, gifts, and more with a hometown touch. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers, shakes, malts, and a whole lot more just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. J&B Auto, Prairie Grove's Bumper to Bumper Parts Store, and by Frederick's One Stop, the one stop for all your needs when you're on the go. Tonight's broadcast is made possible through the generous donations of PG Telco, providers of PGTigersOnline.com, and by the Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club, where showing your Tiger pride is just one membership away. And now, sit back and relax. It's time for Prairie Grove Tiger Basketball. and welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Val Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmiston, and Ulysses Ruley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco, the providers of PGTigersOnline.com. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Ozark Delight, America's number one fundraising lollipops. Lewis Automotive, serving all of Northwest Arkansas since 1947. The Bank of Fayetteville, we're banking on your potential. Sterling Drug, serving Prairie Grove since 1918. Flowers and friends, flowers, gifts, and more with a hometown touch. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers, shakes, malts, and a whole lot more just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. J&B Auto, Prairie Grove's Bumper to Bumper Parts Store, and by Frederick's One Stop, the one stop for all your needs when you're on the go. Tonight's broadcast is made possible through the generous donations of PG Telco, providers of PGTigersOnline.com, and by the Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club, where showing your Tiger pride is just one membership away. And now, sit back and relax. It's time for Prairie Grove Tiger Basketball.
Good evening and welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Vol Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmondson, and Ulysses Ruley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco. The providers up. Well, we're back after halftime, and we were checking some stats, and I was a little surprised that the turnover was only six, but it must be all walks, Derek. Yeah, and actually Gentry's turned the ball over seven times. So that's, uh, you know, it felt like we had turned it over a lot more. And then I checked the rebounding stats, too, from Mr. Arguello. And Gentry's got 11 rebounds. We've got 11 rebounds. The difference has been Gentry's just shooting the ball much better than we are. I think they're shooting 47%. We're shooting 30%. So that makes a big difference in a two-point ball game. So, you know, Prairie Grove, we've got our work cut out for us. We need to come out in this third quarter with the energy that we showed in that second quarter. Uh, it didn't necessarily translate into points for us, but we did outscore Gentry 9-7 to in that second quarter. So got to continue to build off that and not let Gentry get some early baskets to give them even more confidence at this point. <coughs> <laughs> Got some uh, feedback tonight. Our guys need to be fighting for the ball. Give a rundown of where the tournaments will be. Henry will try to do that. Tell the pretty camera later, thanks for showing the cheerleaders. And uh, Dina's been home ill and hope she gets well soon. Well, Gentry has the ball to start the second half. Well, this started off during the first half, so we didn't get a foul in the first eight seconds, Derek. That's right. Yeah, and Gentry had, did a really good job of just running their offense in that first half. Well, we got away with a foul right there. Yeah, we may have. I'm going to keep my eye on Cameron Dowdy. You know, he, he, he's he been struggling lately on the offensive end. Rhodes for three, no good. Patterson with a long rebound. That's a good start for Marcus. He feeds Baumgartner. Baumgartner goes up, doesn't get the foul. You know, I want to see Chad continue to play aggressive in the second half like he did in the first half. Yeah, Chad's leading leading all scorers right now in the ballgame. He's got 11 points. Oh, that was close. awfully close. I don't know if you can get any closer to the backcourt. He was pretty nonchalant about going to get the ball. Nice, aggressive. Nice, aggressive play there by, by Cox. Dylan Cox comes in. Delton picks up his second foul with 6.33 to go here in the third. Cox, first free throw on the way, off the front of the rim. Well, then uh, Delton went a long time between fouls. He picked one up the first eight seconds of the ball game and just now picked up his second foul. So good job of Delton of staying out of foul trouble after that start. And look, luckily he misses both. <laughs> now Delton drives. Well, that's a foul right there. We didn't get the foul, and Delton was a little too far under when he shot it, but I think he thought he was going to get the foul. Right. There was definitely contact on the drive there. A long three. And Wyan, he had a lot of confidence. He was about uh, probably four feet behind the line, so he gives Gentry a five-point lead. Prairie Grove has not had the lead the entire game. Was tied at 22, tied at two. And that's been uh, where we've been so far. Delton Rhodes with the ball. Battles thought about it. Oh, he got away with something there. Dowdy for three, no good. And rebound goes to Adler now with 534 to go. I mean, Gentry's got to be thinking first victory of the season right now. Yeah, and, and they've got to continue to be patient, but not too patient. I mean, they've probably not played this whole season with the lead, so this could be uncharted territory for them. Uh, some least, teams can handle that. Some teams, the pressure gets a little Oh, bit. gosh. Patterson has to be careful. He's already gotten one tee this year. Yeah. 
Now Gentry with a chance to stretch it to their largest lead of the game. It's been seven. They're at five right now. Haig on the way. No good. Well, Gentry now has missed their last three free throws. I'm sure I'll jinx it and they'll make it this time. But shot on the way and no good. So four straight misses by Gentry. He just double dribbled. <laughs> well, at least they didn't call a walk on it. <laughs> what we saw most of the first half. And that's going to be on Zong, I believe. You're right. That's his fourth foul. Fourth foul so Page quickly comes in, and now with 5.02, let's see when they bring him back. 5.02 of the third, 20 left. Yeah, Prairie Grove needs points, Lynn. It's been three minutes into the third quarter. Dowdy got a decent and, look and that it, last trip. And got, actually a couple points. minutes into the fourth, so it's been five minutes probably in the ball time that Prairie Grove, oh. Baumgartner's got to take that shot. Battles loses it on the drive inside. Baumgartner's got to take that shot, Derek. Yeah, and he never even looked at the basket. I think he thought somebody was going to be there, never looked at the basket and passed the ball out. But, yeah, I think he had an open layup right there. Not sure if Gentry's 100% sure what they're running on offense right now. They look a little confused. Now that time Patterson makes a good defensive play, not called for the foul that time. And, and you're right now, Prairie Grove has been good six minutes into the game without a basket. Delton Rhodes drives, no good. And that was a good look. Real good look. and. And sometimes it happens to a good player like Delton. You haven't touched the ball. You haven't hit a shot in a long time. And you start forcing things. And that was a really good take by Delton. He's just got to finish that shot. And wide open there was Cox. He didn't take it. Page with the ball. Yeah, you get the feeling that if it's not Adler or Wyand on the outside, they're not going to shoot it. And Gentry kind of blew an opportunity that time. Now Battles draws. He feeds Rhodes. Rhodes. And he's going to get the foul. I thought he was going to call a walk. Yeah. <laughs> we may have shuffled the feet there, but well, our basket that call to go our way. Our basket comes at 323, which means we went four minutes, 37 seconds in this, and I believe about and two minutes. Two minutes of the uh, so first half, yeah. Almost seven minutes without a basket. Battle's going to take a rest, and he's kind of hobbling on his knee a little bit. Matt Glenn comes in. Well, one thing Prairie Grove has done well tonight, Lynn, we're 9 out of 12 at the free throw line, so we're making them count when we get to the line. But And Delton, Delton. picks up. Delton's got to be smarter than that. And uh, Arguello's going to come in for Rhodes. Well, that's just another. He, he's picked up two like that. Out on the perimeter, and, really no and, need to reach and there was, right there. And there was, there was a, another time he did it and didn't get called. Right, so. right. At some point, you can't uh, you can't keep doing that without getting a call. Right. Prairie Grove in a little bit of trouble with Delton on the bench, and then Battles, who's played well tonight, he's got a little knee. He was hobbling on his knee, so Dowdy and Patterson probably going to have to be the scorers here. Matt Glenn for three, bottom, no. and Matt Glenn gives Prairie Grove the lead for the first time tonight at 2:52 of the third quarter. Well, that was much needed. We've got the lead. Now we're going to see how Gentry responds. And now Dowdy's going to go. He's going to drive all the way. I'm, I, I'm like, speechless. Well, it seemed like Dowdy needed to take one more dribble. It seemed like he pulled up his dribble right at the free throw line. But but it looked like he got hit. And it looked like somebody went over the back. Yeah, yeah. And Not to say he didn't get fouled, but I think one more dribble. Would have got him in there, yeah. Would have got him in there a little closer. Haig with the ball. Adler's camping out down the lane. He's yes, been there he for is. a while. There we go, Sims. And they're going to call Peyton Sims for a reach there. They, get, they got Gentry on that. Oh, lane. did they get Number Gentry? 12. Yep, they got Adler on that. Adler, that's his first foul. They've got three team fouls. Prairie Grove's got three. We're down to 2.17 to go here in the third. And a close game tonight. 
Well, it was good to see Matt Glenn just catch that and fire that. Oh, yeah, there's Dowdy for three. Bottom! Bottom, yes, and Prairie Grove with two straight threes. Stretch the lead, 31-27. This is Prairie Grove's large, they just got the lead. It's their largest of the game. Now in the corner, and Hague's looking to give it up. Cox with the ball. They kept Payton. Yep. Well, it's, it's big when, you know, Delton went out of the game. We were down two points after he picked up that third foul. And since that point, we've hit two threes, outscored him 6 nothing, And not saying we're a better team without Delton in the game, but good job by the guys that are out there making the most of their opportunity. And really, really glad, really, really glad to see Matt Glenn, like oh, yeah. you said, just picked it up, he had the open shot, took the three. Yeah, he was open, didn't hesitate, he just shot it. I like to see that from players. Good job by Matt. Glad to see the Gentry cheering section. Call him black and white. I kind of agree with him tonight. And now our going to go. And Cox is upset. And he's walking around a little bit with that attitude face of that's his fourth, so he knows it's getting critical time as well. Zong left with 5.02, I believe, is what we said in the third. So there's another starter for Gentry with. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. They threw the, the lead official through the ball to Arguello as Matt Glenn was trying to get to the line. And they're going to call that a lane violation. And now Arguello is just going to get one shot here, Lynn. Tough break. On the way and good. Now Brad Harton with the foul. Now Prairie Grove's got five. So... Only got one more to give before we go into the bonus. It's so important that when you pressure, play pressure defense, you move your feet more than your hands because the referee will always call a hand check more often than not. Prairie Grove with a five-point lead. Their largest lead of the game is right now. Largest lead by anybody has been seven. Move your feet, Cameron. Move your feet. Oh, nice little pass there. And now Matt Glenn's going to be called with a foul. So Ryan looked like he's going to take a shot. It wasn't a good shot. Threw it behind his head. Got a little fancy. 1-10 to go here in the third. Prairie Grove leading 32-27. Cox with four fouls on the line and makes it. Cox with three points on the night. He's this. He's net. He's just uh, one of three from the line. 32-28. One minute, ten seconds to go in the third quarter. I think Prairie Grove was expecting a little easier game tonight, and uh, now they're in for a dogfight, Derek. Yeah, and I, I'm just glad we found a way to. That's our ball. Thank you. Just glad we found a way to to really get this lead in the third quarter, uh, and it's it's not out of out of the question by any means. This game is not in hand for either team, but. I'm glad we've got the lead at this point. And and Delton Rhodes back into the game for Prairie Grove. Now Pat, we got numbers. We got numbers. Adler's back, and now Harton over to Dowdy. Dowdy's going to drive. He feeds. There's well, that's Patterson. A great play by Dowdy. And nice rebound by Delton Rhodes, and that's going to be Pe uh, Bryant with the foul. 45.4 seconds. Delton needs to knock these down. Delton Road sitting at seven points tonight. Delton's first shot on the way. String music there, so we got 33-28. Another shot come. If you're watching tonight, go to pgtigersonline.com, the comment page. Second one's good, and Prairie Grove up to a six-point lead. A little full court pressure. Delton! Is reaching again, Derek. He's going to get called for that fourth yeah, foul. Your hands up, Delton. Not out. You want your hands straight up so that official will not be tempted to call that well, foul. You don't want him getting a foul with 30-something seconds to go here in the third quarter. That's... And with the six-point lead. Cox trying to get a little fancy and miss it. Now Prairie Grove with a chance for one shot with 18 seconds to go here. Tell you what, Lynn, Arguello has come in and played real hard this, oh, absolutely. this game. 
He is giving great effort tonight. And battles may be heard. I'm going to check with his dad here at the ha at the quarter break and find out if he's going to make it back in. I saw him hobble off. Mm -hmm. Coach Ed's going to call a timeout right here. 13 seconds to play in the third quarter. I got to think he's trying to draw something up to where De Delta Rose can get a look either on the outside or going to the basket. I think the ball will end up in Delton's hands. He's got to be careful he doesn't go in out of control and, like you said, pick up that fourth foul on a charge. Well, I, I, when, we, when we did the, the full court pressure there after we made the free throw, he, he reached just like he did before, and I was yep. afraid he's going to get yep. that foul. Got to be careful. Um, Delton, oh, he went in out of control a little bit, and he's going to get called for, oh, he's going to get a foul go his way, and that's going to be a one-and-one. And, one. and five fouls right there on Dylan Cox. Lynn. So Cox is out of the game for the rest of the game. I'm surprised uh, Coach Price left him in there with four fouls. Well, you know, Coach Price, nothing to lose. I, mean, I guess you're right. They haven't won yet this year. He's I, got to take his chances. They're in this ball game, so I can understand maybe why he, he rolled the dice and played him there for that long, but you're right, it may hurt them playing an entire quarter. Delton, oh, yes, nice executed play. I made a mistake, I said it was gonna be a one and one, and uh, it's not gonna be a one and one because of, uh, I was looking at Prairie Grove side with six fouls, yeah, yeah. and I think they both now have six, so one and one will be the remainder of the game. And, uh, and as we end the third quarter, Prairie Grove has the largest lead by anyone in the game thus far with eight points. And now Prairie Grove outscored them 14-4 to four that quarter. Let's take a quick quarter break. We'll be back with you after these messages. But we'll wait and let the cheerleaders go there for a second. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. But what does that mean to you? It means that you get to keep up with all your sporting events associated with Prairie Grove Athletics on a website furnished and maintained by PG Telco. It means that the folks at PG Telco have an interest in you, your kids, your school, and your community. And they're focused on progress. They're committed to bringing you the very latest in technology for your home or your office for telephone, internet, long distance, or direct TV. Think PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Well, we're back for the fourth and final quarter. Prairie Grove leading 36-28. But this uh, eight-point lead has not come easy. Uh, you know, we just ran an ad from PG Telco, and I, I, we probably don't thank them enough for making this possible. We have a lot of sponsors, and we appreciate them all, but the one thing Prairie Grove Telephone Company does is they provide the equipment, the server. He got away with it. Now he's not going to get away. They're going to get on the floor. They're going to call foul. Wow. But uh, they make it possible with the server that we use, all the equipment, uh, the wireless card, uh, when we don't have uh, Internet. So they make it all possible. So we thank PG Telco for all they do for Prairie Grove the Prairie Grove webcast, the Booster Club, and Prairie Grove Athletics. Delton Rhodes at the line, shot on the way, good. Now Prairie Grove with a chance to take a 10-point lead. Delton up to 12 points now. Second shot on the way. And Arguello, nice hustle save. And then Dowdy turns it over inside. 10-point lead, Prairie Grove 38-28. The score at one time was 27-22. to yep. So we've outscored them 16-1 to yep. since they had a five-point lead. And they had a chance at one time with a five-point lead to go up seven. Missed a couple free throws, I believe. And there's a nice shot by Haig. He breaks that drought, 38-30, 7-26 to go in the ball game. Well, that, that three that Matt Lynn helped, uh, hit right off when, it was, when we were down five, that seemed to spark us, and it started that long run of 16-1. to one. This guy is unbelievable. He's travel happy. He wants to call the traveling every chance he gets. Well, Derek, I did not uh, talk with Chad Battle's dad for just a second during the break, and he said that Chad was hurt, and so uh, don't know if we'll see Chad again tonight. 
Well, it's a, it's a shame because he played really well Tuesday night, has played really well tonight, and has been a little bit banged well, up in both games. Well, the thing he did tonight is he, when when Ginger was playing, there's a three-point shot by in and out by Page. Thank when, Brent, when, when Ginger was playing their best, Chad kept us close. Yep. yep. You know, and then uh, that was a very critical point in the game. I think Chad had 11 of our first 14 or 15 points, so did a good job of coming in and starting in, in Ty's place tonight. And it's too bad to see him go out. There's going to be another foul. Delton's now rolling around with a little. Who, who is not injured for us at this point, Lynn? It's just like a. I don't know, but contagious or something. If, if Delton's hurting a little bit, I mean, Coach Ed may want to get him a little bit, although sometimes sitting on the bench tightens it up. Right. Yeah, you're right. We may be able to tell how he's feeling with these free throw shots here. Shot on the way. Good. He's done a good job at the line tonight, Lynn. Eight for eight at this point. Gray Grove done a, a good job overall at the free throw line. Delton's next one on the way, and it's good. We're, we're 16 out of 19 at the line tonight. That's critical. And the ball goes out of bounds, and with 6.30 remaining, the way this game's been with the injuries, we may just want to just get out of here. Just get out of here. Get out of here. And Delton's yeah, Delton hurt. is going to come out. We may want to take our time, definitely. Some instruction to Cameron may be, don't rush this thing, Cameron. Well, one thing through the years, playing at Gentry, you're not going to come out without some bumps and bruises. I mean, Gentry has always been a physical team, and that's what's happening tonight. It's been several years ago, but I remember they had a big, tall kid, probably about five or six years ago, just strong football player type. Uh, I can't recall his name, but he was one of the most physical players I remember watching. I, do you remember his You're name? Talking about the one that played when your son Ty played. I actually, it was a before. That? It was before him. Before that. Yeah, I've been in Idlet and Scroggins junior year, I believe. Okay, uh, his name was Justin Smith. Yeah, about a six-five broad Just, shoulder. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a <laughs> he, was, he a, was a battler. He was a battler, big, strong kid. Now Patterson on the way and. Misses the shot at 41-30. Prairie Grove leads down, getting close to the six-minute mark. Wyan for three, no good. Page with a nice rebound and goes up and puts it in. Colby Bryant with the basket. Now under six minutes to go. Prairie Grove holding on to 41-32 lead. Luckily, Cameron Dowdy paying attention there because Baumgartner let that one go by him. Yeah, we got we got a, a little a little frenetic right now on the offensive end. Try to calm things down right here. This is where your seniors out on and, the floor. And we only have, well, we have two seniors. Well, I guess Matt, is Matt a senior? Matt's a senior, yeah. So we, we have four seniors on the floor right now. Three, I, I, I forget Cameron's only a junior. Seniors, yeah. Hey, uh, now just uh, with five, about five and a half minutes, Zong back in the game, and there's Adler for three. No good, Patterson. So Zong's back in, comes in at about the five and a half minute mark. After he was out almost the full quarter. Well, Adler's got a good looking shot. Good job, and Marcus. Marcus drives to the hole. Marcus now with seven points or five points. Song at the top of the key, no good. <laughs> I am telling you what, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, but that's uh, <laughs> that's comical. No idea. It, it really is. Baumgartner did not even <laughs> have, have possession. possession. It didn't even come close to having possession to be able to walk with the ball. If he wanted to call it out on him, that's one thing. Oh, You're right. I like the way Adler shoots the ball. Didn't drop for him, but he got a nice shot. Nice release. I watched um, Storley play in the JV game lane, gave, gave real good effort, scored some points in that game, and uh, I think he's going to be a good player in the future. Just a sophomore for the Tigers, number 33. Delton Rhodes back in the game. How did, uh, did uh, Arguello play in the uh... – Arguello played as well. Yeah, played really well too. The, the JV team got him a win this evening before the Colors Day festivities took place. Going to be a kick there, so – Gentry will get 43-42. Prairie Grove, this is the largest lead of the game at 11. Yeah. 
Four minutes to go in the ball game. Now what we'll have after this is we'll have a little bit of a break. You know, Wyan likes throwing the ball back he, in he, on people. Yes, he does. And this time Adler gets the basket. What we'll do at the end of the game, we'll take, we'll go through the stats, name our stake and shake player of the game, and then we'll uh, take a little bit of a break while the girls warm up, and then we'll join you at the beginning of the uh, cast, uh, beginning of the girls' game. Storley way off on the three. Now Paige driving to the hole, misses the layup, and but he gets his own rebound, but comes from out. 3.44 to go, Prairie Grove leading 43-34. Well, the last few possessions for the Tigers have been a little chaotic. Um, we've gotten a little bit too quick. We've got a nine-point lead. Uh, we need to work our offense a little bit before we start settling for three-point shots. I mean, Gentry's tired. They're going to have to start gambling on defense, and that's going to open up some things for us inside. I still can't get over the travel call when we didn't have possession. <laughs> I just, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't even know what to say I couldn't about stop, it. it was. We, we, that goes right up there with the shallow jump ball that we, that we looked well, the at. Shallow, the shallow jump ball whenever Baumgartner had <laughs> wrestled him to the floor like he was a, a wrestler, you know, when they do the move where they take him and slam him to the floor. Yeah. And we got a jump ball out of it. I, I, you know, Lynn, when you put these videos back up at the end of the year, I'm going to go back and watch that every week. <laughs> if I could just have a little clip where we have a link that would just link to the we, bad calls. What we need to do, what we ought to do is we ought to, we ought to have the uh, East Lab go yes. through all the games and make, put together a collage of bad calls. Oh, man, that was think, great entertainment. I think the uh, uh, that, that ranks in the top five it, for it sure. go up there. That one and the shallow jump ball, the, those two are going on the list. All right, well, now Prairie Grove, Lynn, we've... I don't know what's going on here. Okay, something's on the floor. We got a leak, it seems like, on the floor. Oh, it's a leak. Well, I guess Coach Price still has two of his timeouts left. That's right. He and used three of them early, and he's has Coach still Ed got used two. the timeout tonight? Coach Ed, I believe, has used two tonight. Yeah, has he? He used two. Um, used one at the end of the third quarter to draw up a play. We got oh, that's right. a little. A nice little look, but didn't finish it. And then he just called that one right there to try to settle, set our team down and let them know, guys, we've got a lead. We don't need to be in a hurry. And it's a pretty substantial leak. I think Coach Price is calling for more towels. Well, it is. It was raining outside when I got here at first, just you know, a little bit of a drizzle, so I don't know what's going on out there now. Well, let's give you a little bit. It's 3.44 to go. 43-34, Prairie Grove leads. While they still work on the court, should we? Well, it looks like they're going to go ahead and resume here. It just keeps well, coming down. I'm going to, I'm going to go to a commercial break, and we'll, we'll be back after this. Ozark Delight Lollipops are America's number one fundraising lollipop. We produce our lollipops the old-fashioned way in small batches, ensuring flavor intensity to the last lick. Mass-produced, machine-made lollipops. Hey, Derek, can you take over play-by-play play sure for thing. just a minute? Sure thing. Prairie Grove doing a pretty good job running their motion offense right here. There's Brad Harton inside. That shot's too strong. Wyan comes away with the rebound, and now he gets it ahead to number 21, Haig. Dusty Haig, the sophomore player. And there's 12, Dylan Adler, three-point shot, no good. Haig with the rebound. It rattles out, and I think Adler tips that one out. <laughs> Unbelievable. And we just got another... We got another addition. Unbelievable. We got another addition to our bad call collage. Well, Dylan Adler came way over the top, knocked that ball out of bounds, and they give it to Gentry. Now Adler's got another shot, and he gets a two-point basket. The Prairie Grove fans are not happy at this point, to say the least. That cuts the lead down to 43-36 with three minutes to play in the ball game. Prairie Grove will be in the double bonus on the next foul. Marcus Patterson drives in, kicks it out to Cameron Dowdy. And now he's going to get called for a walk. Another unforced error for the Tigers. 
And that time it was a different official that called the walk, so I guess it actually had to be a walk. I don't know about that, but it, probably, it did look like a walk, though. <laughs> 2.40 to play in the ball game. Gentry down seven. Prairie Grove has battled back to take the lead after being down all of the first half and most of the third quarter. There's Zong with the 15-foot shot, and it goes in the basket. And now it's a 43-38 ball game as the Gentry crowd comes to life. 2.15 to play in the ball game. Marcus Patterson, Arguello with the ball on the wing. Up to Brad Harton. Brad Harton, nobody's guarding him. He doesn't have to do anything with the ball. He could just sit there and hold it, Lynn. And I think that's what we're going to do. We're only up by five. Yeah. We've been up by as many as 11, down under two minutes to go, and Prairie Grove's just going to kind of hold out here. Well, eventually, if we're strong enough with the ball, Gentry's going to have to foul us. We're going to be able to shoot free throws. And two at a time. Yes. Just continue to be patient. Take care of the basketball. Just settle it down, fellas. That's goodness gracious. And they're going to foul there with 133 to go. Delton can pick it a three-possession game here. Got a couple of texts, Derek. I was responding to one, Mitch Whitehouse, saying everything's looking good tonight. Good deal. And then I uh, always call him the godfather of our webcast, Kendall Lehman, was wanting to know uh, updates on scores. Didn't realize the boys were actually playing first tonight. Oh, okay. Delton Rhodes on the way, and it rolls in for us. 44-38. Again, the Tigers shooting very well for the free throw line tonight. Delton is 11 for 11 at the free throw line. Prairie Grove 19 out of 23 overall from the line. And that's probably been our best free throw performance of the year. And Paige with the ball. And, you know, he's been aggressive, Paige has. Paige gets it out. The Hague, there's, now there's Zong, no good. Cameron Dowdy comes down the rebound down a minute. And 10, 9. Yeah, Prairie Grove, be strong. They're going to have to foul you, fellas. And they're, they're going to call a foul. They're going to call a foul on us, Lynn. White, oh, nope. They called it on White. They're calling the Price is Right. I like that for Coach Price. Delton at the line, and now he's 12 of 12, 46-38. And, and you know how you know that number 25 for Gentry is not the Kobe Bryant? That foul would have never been called on the real Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Delton misses finally from the free throw line. And here he goes again. That is his signature move. He, he gets caught in the corner a lot. He throws it off of people. Done that four or five times, it seems. Oh, like at that. least, at least. Now Paige knocked away by Rhodes, and now Haig fouls, and a little frustration there on Haig's part. And now Prairie Grove looks pretty comfortable at 46-38, but, you know, people will wake up tomorrow, look at the paper, or go on Fearless Friday, and they'll see Prairie Grove won 46-38, or... 48, it'll be 10 points, and people yep. say, well, that's kind of what we expected, but it wasn't like no, that it, tonight. It was a battle, that's for sure. And, you know, this is a Gentry team that we beat by 25-plus points at our place earlier in the year. Granted, we had Ty Tice at that point, and, and this is our first game without Ty. You know, it's a little bit of adjustment for the guys, but I, I thought they've handled it well, hostile environment. Well, and, and coming away with the win and just surviving, and, and let's get to next week healthy is the main thing at this point. We've had some well, guys banged up. Well, I think that there's Adler. Nice shot on the way. No good. Delton Rose with the ball. And now Haig fouls Delton. Uh, but, the, Derek, I think the other thing is I don't think the first half, I mean, obviously we missed Ty Ties. Yep. But I think we played good enough in the first half. But Ginger played an outstanding first half. Yeah, they really did. They, they shot, shot the, the ball, ball extremely well. well. Yes, they did. The one thing that Delton makes another through. free throw got us through that first half was we got to the free throw line often and then Chad Battles hit some some big shots early to keep us in in that game well Delton the last two times uh, 
missed one of his two free throws. Who hit that last shot, Lynn, for, for Gentry? Was that Zong? That I believe that was Zong with the basket. Well, if we talk about stake and shake player of the game, I mean, I think tonight, while Delton's done exceptionally well from the line, I think tonight, uh, he'll go to Chad Battles tonight because Chad Battles tonight, and, I, and, we, and we give it to him, one, because he had to fill in for Ty. He played very aggressively. He kept us in the game early when Ginter was playing lights out. And so tonight's stake and shake player game, Chad battles, and he got hurt in about the third quarter. Ends up with 11 points tonight. So nice game tonight for Chad, and hopefully this this bruised knee that we kind of keep getting is nothing serious. Yeah, because we've got a, another, another game Tuesday night that is never an easy place to play. It will be a physical game against Berryville, and they will have revenge on their mind from – Losing to us by two points, I think, earlier well, in the year. That was a big win for us and, and a big loss for them. Right now, they're, Berryville's in a three-way tie for second place in the conference with P. Ridge and Gravit, and that, that loss could really come back to hurt them uh, in trying to get well, that one seed or the two seed. Well, uh, and, and Lynn, tonight with the win from Shiloh, they're automatically one of the regional uh, representatives from our conference if they win their game tonight. Well, the thing, the thing you got to look at now – Arguello's come in and done a good job tonight. Oh, yeah. I've been yeah. really impressed I, with him. I, I want to talk about him. He, he's come in and played exceptional. Matt Glenn hit a big shot. Uh, and the Gentry, the Gentry student section is chanting the Price is Right and in, in, uh, showing the uh, affection for Coach Price. Well, Arguello hits the free throw 49-40. But... Matt Glenn hit that shot when really we were down by five and hit that. No, we were down. It was 27 25 because he, right. he, he gave us the lead, lead for the first right. time of the night. So big play by him tonight. Good good effort from him. Adler, turnaround jumper, no good. Dowdy now with the ball. Nine seconds, eight. And we'll run it down. Prairie Grove's going to win at 50 40. Two, one, and that's the ball game. Our final score, the Prairie Grove Tigers 50, Gentry 40. Stake and shake play the game, Chad Battles. We will take a, a moment here and go through the stats, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a break with some commercials and get back to you for the girls game. The girls game will start in approximately 15 minutes. So, Derek, if you want to go through the stats. Well, I'm going to give an assist right here to uh, Mr. Arguello. He's got a stat pad, and he's letting us borrow it so I can be official tonight. Instead of doing just points, I may give a few other stats. Oh, go for it. Uh, for the Tigers, Delton Rhodes led the Tigers with 19 points. Chad Battles with 11. Cameron Dowdy with 7. Marcus Patterson had 5 points. Uh, Arguello and Matt Lynn each had three points, and then Brad Harton had two points. The Tigers shot 24 out of 31 at the free throw line, so did a great job of getting there. And then I'm looking at this to see if I can uh, decipher some of this. Uh, Prairie Grove did have 13 turnovers. Uh, we shot only 29% from the field, Lynn, so the free throws really were uh, what won this game for us, I think. We did have 26 rebounds on the night, so good overall effort. The first half a little sluggish, like you mentioned, but um, good job of just winning the ball game, surviving. That gets us back to 500 in the conference. We're six and six now with two games to play, and who knows? Depending on how Ozark does, um, that win right there could clinch us and get us the five seed, which will keep us away from an Ozark Farmington matchup in the first round at the district tournament. Well, we'll uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to take about. Uh, let's see, we got. 11 minutes before, so we're going to take about a five, well, say about a seven-minute break, and we'll come back, kind of talk about the girls' game and get started. So join us back here in about seven or eight minutes, and we will uh, webcast the girls' game. <laughs> 